bear that laugh from her throat forever. I'm ready. Arcane has returned for its second and final chapter, precisely three years after the first season premiered. But has the wait been worthwhile, the aftermath of that startling explosion, which Jinx planned, is where Arcane Season 2 Episode 1 begins. The majority of the council is either dead or in excruciating pain, but amazingly, Mel and Jace are still alive. Jace knows Victor might still be alive when he sees a hint of the crackling blue in the distance. He hurries him to the lab and uses the hex tech to try to revive him, but even though his pulse is steady, he hardly appears human. The only thing that appears to be keeping him alive at the moment is the Hexcore's evolution, however. The more trying matters here stem from the grief-stricken tone hanging over the city. A beautiful montage ensues, with our main characters the only bits of color in a hand-drawn, scrawled black and white funeral procession. Caitlin is overcome by a swirling cocktail of grief and anger, given her mum was one of those who died. She's not the only one though the remaining council are angry and call this war. Regardless of innocence, Counselor Salo is determined to go in with force and take them out. However, Mel doesn't agree. In doing this, it would unify the Undercity against them and risk a more brutal force than one deranged individual like Jinx. Mi wants to pin a reward to apprehend her. But the others refuse. They're going to invade instead, and as a council they need to be unified on this decision, however, Ambessa Medarda is here with Salo and it seems she's using his grief to try and make a play for the Hex Tech, Caitlin is the focus here though and between feeling guilty for not taking the shot against Jinx, and living up to her family legacy, she's conflicted. There's also the matter of Vi too. This is the only person Caitlin allows herself to be vulnerable around. Vi wants the gauntlets remade so she can go after Jinx, but she refuses. There's no more time for rogue missions but Caitlyn has another proposal, she wants Vi to be one of the enforcers when they storm into Zaun. This would show a unified front and that not all of the Undercity are these reckless mercenaries those in Piltover believe them to be. Naturally, Caitlyn vehemently refuses, given her past, and she leaves, Jace shows up to see Caitlyn next, who's in danger of being swallowed up by her emotions. However, through it all she still has positive things to say about Vi. A junior officer called Maddie arrives to see her like a fangirl in the street. She talks to Vi about how Caitlin had nothing but good things to say about her, and offers a lot of respect. It's a different side to the enforcers than she's used to seeing, could it change her mind on everything? When the memorial service takes place to honor the fallen, Vi notices something not quite right. Men still loyal to Silco make their play and his goons, disguised as officers and mourners, show up and immediately start war on the topside, in the chaos, Jace is slashed across the back but saved by Vi at the last second, while Caitlin takes charge of the rabble enforcer group with her pinpoint accuracy. However, thanks to the Hex Tech, Jace and Vi help turn the tables together, alongside reinforcements showing. And those reinforcements? Well, they appear to be a merchant guild but we'll have to wait and see on that front. In the aftermath of this fight in the memorial, Caitlin is angry and pissed off. Vi realizes that this was all a ploy to rile them up and make the topsiders angry enough to make a mistake. Well, looking at the devastation, it seems to be working. It would appear that someone may have been helping from the inside, Caitlin doesn't know how to proceed from here, but the key could well be the Kiriman key she's given by her mum. She decides to embrace her airtight and shows up at the latest council meeting, meaning business. She's leading a strike team into Zaun with three objectives, find Jinx, disable any shimmer and neutralize all agents loyal to Silco. And the turning point? She's modified a bunch of Hextech guns with Jace. Oh, and Vi is now going to be an enforcer too, armed with the gauntlets she wanted, now that Arcane is back, the greatest show of 2021 doesn't waste any time getting into its groove. The community has clearly been rocked by the aftermath of the council attack, and the altercation at the memorial just serves to highlight the sadness and rage that everyone is experiencing, the characterization of Arcane, however, is where it excels. 
This time, we learn a great deal more about Caitlin. Her mixed emotions, and her battle to control them. She is clearly distraught and furious, but she also has deep sorrow for not intervening more to stop Jinx. As she struggles to contain her emotions and appears to be on the verge of losing her mind, it's interesting to watch this unfold on TV, there are some lovely moments here as well, such as the funeral's black and white contrast with the colored characters or the montages, which provide a chance to showcase the soundtrack, which has always been one of Arcane's stronger points, in any case. The conclusion gives a lot of room for the next two episodes this week. That concludes our review for today, but the discussion is far from over. For more, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe for more videos. Keep the magic of movies alive until the next time, signing off from FK Bytes.